Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Oh, hello, Jill. How are Hi, you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine, yeah. Uh, so welcome to another Autobright podcast, and this is a very, very special podcast. Do you know why? I haven't got a clue. Because we've got some very, very special guests in, w- them? in with us today, which is, yeah, we're really, really excited. So, number one, guest number one, would you like to uh, introduce yourself? How are you doing, everyone? Uh, I'm Bobby Thompson. I race for Autobright Direct with Miller's Oils at Team Hard Racing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lively crowd we've got was, today. Yes, yes. <laughs> in the small, uh, in the small truck. Uh, so, guest number two. Uh, yeah, I'm Jack Butel, and I'm racing for GoFix and AutoAid. I think yours is a bit longer than actually. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome guys, welcome to the Auto Right Podcast. Thank uh, you. We're Open Park this weekend, very, very exciting. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah, I think we are. Yeah, um, yeah we're coming into a round here that uh, is more of a chassis circuit, which is one point that we've been talking about all year, we're really, really strong at. Um, across the whole team, we know we've got arguably one of the best chassis on the grid. So uh, yeah. Uh, hopefully I didn't put my uh, foot in my mouth there, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're ready for it, aren't we, Jack? Uh, yeah, I'm massively ready. It's always, like you say, we've been saying about how good this chassis is. Um, we've always been let down by other things, so it'll be interesting to see, obviously, how the high end I compares to this. Mm. Um, we struggled massively last year, so hopefully this year with the with the chassis we've been going craving about, it will it will perform this weekend. It's exciting. Fabulous. Can't wait. And of course, Alton Park is our home, uh, home is, circuit. Yeah. We're just about 30, 35 minutes away, that's all. Yeah. It's great. It makes a change. Yeah, Travelling all the way down to, uh, you know, Brands Hatch and... Truxton. Truxton. <laughs> well, that's my closest. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, thanks for joining us, guys. So, we've got some uh, we've got some questions <coughs> for, for you guys. Uh, quite different questions as well. There's a, there's there's a, good, a good mix. There's a good mix of, yeah. uh, of, of questions. So, uh, get ready to answer some of our insane questions. Let's go. So we basically had like a brainstorm at work to see what questions would you ask a touring car driver if you could. So these are the ones we caught with. <laughs> I should have these work. <laughs> so the first one is more towards you, Bobby. Yeah. So we've done a bit of research. We've gone back in time. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and, uh, we've noticed that sort of more or less from the beginning, especially from the VW era. I sound like I know I'm talking about <laughs> Practically <coughs> stayed with Team Hard, pretty much. I know you had a bit of a break a couple of years ago. But why Team Hard? Why is it important to stay with a team? Because we've heard other drivers going on about consistency being important. Why? Why? Um, for me, uh, I come on to this Toka weekend, the Touring Car weekend, um, not really having a clear path of knowing what I was going to do. Um, at the start, I come on to this weekend doing... The Formula Four Championship, which is now called the Formula Four Championship, um, and run out of money as a lot of race drivers do, um, and had nowhere to go. Uh, and somewhere or another, I can't quite remember how now, or how sorry, I, I met the bald man with the earring, the team <laughs> boss, and uh, Good he's, description. He's, he's, yeah. he's the man that makes it all happen. And uh, <coughs> at the start, I'll be honest, I thought it was all too good to be true. You know, he was willing to really help me out. And in motorsport and any sport or general life, if someone's really being nice to you and helping you out too much, you, you question it, especially in a sport where it requires a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and I've done my first year with him, you know, long story short, got into yeah. VW Cup. And uh, yeah, uh, we had a cracking year. Uh, he taught me a lot, a hell of a lot of stuff that I even use now and, and I use him when I coach people as well. Um, so yeah, we've done a year, had a really great year. Uh, I then had a year away because I got a, a good offer that I couldn't refuse with, with teaming up with, with another driver. Um, and, and for me, it was just cost the whole time. How mm. could I do the sport I loved but um, was able to do it a little bit cheaper than, you know, remortgaging the house each year? So, uh, yeah, and, and, and then, you know, naturally me and Tony got back together and, and, and it's been like that pretty much since. Um we sat with the team for such a long time. Uh, we've had our bad years, but look at us now. These right. next last year and this year, <coughs> yeah. and I predict the next yeah. couple of years as well. You know, you've 100%. got to uh, yeah. go in the right way. Yeah, definitely. Certainly, uh, moving in the right direction. Anyway, 
Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, pretty much to you then, Jack. Two less questions for you, Jack. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, you started touring cars in 2020, mm-hmm. which was in the middle of the pandemic. Nightmare. So, <laughs> our question to you is how does it compare? What difference does it make when there's no fans, no spectators, to all of a sudden you've got tens and thousands of fans watching and supporting you? What, how does it change? It's, it's massive, and Bobby will say the same thing. Like The crowd is, I think, that makes touring cars touring cars. Um, when we were in COVID, it just didn't feel the same. You've been watching touring cars since I can remember, and you always see the fans getting the autographs and <coughs> engaging with us. Yeah. Um, not having that there, I think, was a big step of touring cars that it missed. And then, obviously, 2021, we did the whole going round on the... Um, lorry and then waving yeah. to the fans mm-hmm. but you just didn't get that engagement that you do when you go to an autograph session um and then at the end of 21 we started having the fans come into the garages and interact with them again and i think that was the big thing is the interaction between everyone was was missed mm. yeah definitely that, well we were there weren't we during <clears throat> covid and it was very strange being like yeah there was just us and nobody else there it was really very I know, strange i never forget uh, media day uh, so I wasn't there until you were there yeah. at Silverstone. I, I never forget that it was just there was just the drivers and some some of the teams. But obviously, yeah, most of them went. There's, there's only so many numbers that were allowed to go, uh, but it was just like a ghost town. It was, yeah, it was. Yeah, I can imagine. Quite, what year quite, was quite that? Twenty one or twenty twenty? Was that twenty one? Because twenty. Well, twenty twenty. I remember seeing this thing that was all on the internet and, uh, and the news <coughs> and you thought oh this is a miles away it's not even yeah it's now we're going to come to England and then yeah <laughs> I remember the day after media day that was it. it race yeah, season yeah. gone yeah. and yeah. Yeah, 21 drinking was beer quiet. in the garden yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> very strange strange time. we had lovely weather though we did, yeah, we did. Yeah, I think that's the best summer we've actually to be fair it's quite hot now <laughs> <laughs> fabulous Being here. so I've got a question for you both then uh, <clears throat> why do you do it? Yeah. Um, for me, um, I mean, there's the much return. You know, why why do you do t- Tony cars? To, I, I, well, I'll answer it it's just motorsport in general. I think it's pretty obvious why we want to do touring cars. It's the biggest series in Europe uh, for uh, fan base um, <laughs> potential for it. You know, um, you can go and do GT stuff, but unless you're paying or going with a wealthy guy, you ain't. No one's giving free drives. Yeah. Where here, there is ways you can get in. If someone likes you and you do a cracking job, it's a very specialist touring car. Um, it's its own little thing. Motorsport in general, why do we do it? I mean, <laughs> you look up and down this grid, there's not one normal driver and no one's got a trade. And, you know, uh, if you're good at something, you know, crack on. I mean, there was a couple, good few years ago when I was about 18, 19, and it was looking like w- w- what was going to happen next for me in motorsport. I, I had no clue. That was when I started thinking, God, I've got to, have I got to go and get a trade or something? I don't have a clue what I'm going to do. I've, you know, my whole mindset's been about this and this only. But, mm. uh, yeah, I mean, it, we all do it because we love it, you know. Um, just whatever your goal is, whether it finishing one up than you've done all year or winning a race or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. achieving that is a better feeling than anything in the world. Anything. And, yeah, uh, yeah it's, a, it's a crazy awesome. way to, to, to live life. Live life, <laughs> yeah. You live weekend by weekend and... Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a shame there's not more um, footage or more uh, TV money spent on what us guys do away from the track. Yeah, uh, it's very you, you know I think Jack you'll probably agree with me. A lot of people think you just you know go away, live a normal life, come back and do these ten weekends, which it is a normal life. You know we're not complete superstar <laughs> rock stars, but there is it, it you know it's. It is a crazy way, you know. I mean, I've only slept in my bed three times last month, so yeah, wow. it, it's a it's wow. a crazy way to live whilst you can. Yeah. yeah. Oh, don't yeah, is it too late for Mark to start? <laughs> <laughs> Mark, I shot drops with you, mate. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> when anybody wants to take me on, I'm there. I'm he keeps ready. asking Tony, but nothing ever no, seems no, to no, happen. No, no. Have you, ever, you haven't driven one? Well, totally can't. Yeah. No. No. Have a go. Yeah. yeah I'm, no. gu- I'm guessing. We it's need to make that happen. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. Good fun. Really good fun. I mean, you know. Uh, probably a lot different from what I'm used to at the at the moment. Very raw, but uh, I'd I'd love that. That'd be I'd be happy. It's it, it's, see, it's seeing it out on track and then <coughs> experiencing it's yeah. like completely different. Yeah. It's um yeah it's definitely mm. thrilling. Mm. But I'd say you, everything you've driven and we've driven, this is a different league of of racing. Yeah, yeah. special. It is. Mm. 
So <clears throat> I've got a this kind of questions for, for both of you really. <laughs> it's quite a good question. So <laughs> if you if you weren't a racing driver, what would you be then? Um and what profession? Well, I know, I don't know. I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty self explanatory. Well, obviously for you, yeah. Um I don't know. I wanna drive I'd still be doing this, you know, I I really would. I've got a passion for the sport. Um, it's easy to fall out of love of it sometimes when you look at it like a job because you've got to, it is my job so um, like everyone does in their jobs you you do fall out of love of it sometimes but you get back on the ground because I've got such a passion for this sport so even if I wasn't doing touring car itself I'd be doing club racing and still doing something there you know I've, I've got a passion for it and I'd, I'd still be doing it in some way or another mm. um, yeah so you, don't, you don't fancy stacking shelves of Stacking products on no, shelves. These arms don't stack. I mean, yeah. <laughs> if you do, we, we need some people that are working. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, yeah, I, if, obviously uh, for yeah. you, yeah. Well, I, I would obviously work for Dad, but yeah. if I wasn't and didn't have the motorsport, like Bob said, that is literally what we live and breathe, but I'd probably go out and do some golf, try and make a living yeah, yeah. out of doing golf. Okay. I love that golf yeah, at the yeah. moment. So, yeah, if it wasn't for that, I'd be... Golfer. Trying to find some balls in some rough. <laughs> <laughs> Fair the, enough. The next, the next Tiger Woods. <laughs> There you go. Okay, so my turn. Your turn. Okay, so we've got the, this next load of questions is for both of you, really. So the next one is, who inspired you? Good Bobby job. Thompson. Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Knew that was coming. <laughs> what an inspiration. Yeah. Um, um, go on, you go first, chat. I think the whole of, like, the Michael Schumacher era was the main thing that kind of got me going. Um, I think what he achieved and what he did not of Ferrari and everyone he raced for, I think was a massive inspiration to go actually. Yeah. And then obviously Lewis managed to get from where nothing yeah. to where he, cause he's yeah. seventh time world champion. Now it's, mm -hmm. it shows that if you put your mind to it and actually commit to what you're doing, you can pretty much achieve anything. And I tell the kids at Carton in Jersey, the same thing. If you put your mind to it, you can always achieve it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think for me is F1, it's, it's always been such a, Far distance for me to even look at and dream of going anywhere near. Um, even as a kid, I, I, I want to do it. And and the kids I was racing against in karting were and were, had that path, but I just knew mm. I didn't have that sort of money, you know. It wasn't happening for me. So, I uh, yeah, it was always touring cars for me. Uh, and at the time, it was Matt Neil play O'Shed and, you know, mm. all the boys and lucky enough to work with them now. Mm. Uh, yeah. and, and they help us out. And, uh, yeah, those those guys... They know what they're doing, eh? You know, they've, they've earned a living here, enough. racing <laughs> well, yeah. 10 weekends a year yeah. and, and, and playing uh, posh bumper cars. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was back then. We yeah. watched a load of old DVDs, didn't we? Going back to like 2010. Yeah. And it was yeah. Shadden and Plato and even before that, that as well. And it was literally bumper cars. Yeah. yeah. Like the Super Tour. Super was Tour. Proper yeah, yeah. bumper cars. Yeah. 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 Yeah, those guys, you know, uh, for me, that's, that's where it's at. You know? yeah. It's a shame it's still not like that. It's a bit. Um, bit well, more rules and yeah, I think yeah, the lots more rules. But yeah, I don't know when these on the you know on the straights, uh, the first first lap it's just chaos and it, yeah. sometimes it can be chaos. Mm. It's you know bumper to bumper and get out of the way and yeah, exactly. I think you'd see more of it if uh, you know the cameras and camera crews have got a, a lot more money and got a lot more modern since then. I think we had if we had uh, cameras in all the cars that would mm. <laughs> that'd be quite impressive. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> going down through the roof, looking at the footage of that, yeah. Right. Well, that kind of leads on to. <coughs> I'm going to skip a couple. Okay. Um, I've written it down at the bottom. It's a little bit controversial. Yeah, great. We go back to it. It's fine. Track limits. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> so that is a sticky one. <laughs> you, 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 you're gonna so get it's that. caused a few issues, hasn't it, this well, season? I mean, I'll start this one off. So tennis, you play it all around the world. That white line's that white line. Yeah. Football, that white line's that white line. Motorsport, we come to Alton Park. And we're not allowed over a red and white curb by two wheels now. That's the new rule that was bought in 10 days ago, whatever it was. I go and race in America and I can do whatever I like. I race in Europe and they allow me all the, all the track but just up to grass or gravel or all of the green. It's the only sport where you can just make it up <coughs> as lap you go by lap. Yeah. Not, not even track yeah. by track, lap by lap. And depending... The, the judge of fact who's watching me, uh, here we've got cameras at Alton Park at Turn 1 that take a picture. I think that's proper. If you've took a picture of me, I've been done, take it on the chin, yeah. give it a go next yeah. lap. But you know, I've, I've had it before where um, there's a guy, I'm coaching a guy and he's uh, he's driven off the track. He's been caught for it. The 
uh, Judge of Fact radios in to the clerk of the course. By the time he sipped his coffee and written it down <laughs> and uh, radioed it in, he actually took our next lap, not the original lap that we cut the corner. Next lap was our quicker lap, and that one was taken away, not even the one we had an infringement on. So uh, I'm all for it. Let's fight it, and let's do it. Let's, let's all be the same. But uh, we I, mean, I could rant on here about yeah. this. But yeah. I mean, <laughs> That's um, why we asked. <laughs> Saturday, tomorrow morning, we're going to have 30 touring car drivers in a uh, truck just behind us and have a briefing on track limits and where not to be and all the rest of it and they'll state it all we're all going to talk about it for about an hour and then we're all going to drive off the track out there and nothing gets done about it Mm -hmm. or 30 or uh, 25 will get away of it and five will get done it's just either we're all for it and have cameras everywhere and have it really almost sillily policed very inconsistent yeah Yeah, like last year at least we knew we could use the green Mm -hmm. and everyone was up to the green where this year like we go to Fruxton and you go through church and it's like the the line was what six inches. Yeah, it's nothing. And you're doing 130 yeah. mile an hour going through church and you come out and there's a six inch curve that we allowed to use. It was a bit bit silly. Yeah. So I think the how we had it last year was actually all right. We could yeah. use the green up mm-hmm. to the green. Mm. And like Bobby's saying, it's it's the inconsistency all over the the world is well. This championship can do this. If everyone was the same, I think everyone would be understanding. Yeah. yeah. So has it changed again then? Just said it's yeah, changed. so it was. So if you if you look at an exit curb, and uh, that's another thing, they don't care about apex curbs. So take all turn one, on one here, right, for okay. example. <laughs> turn one here, it's quicker to take a load of curb at the apex. That's the, that's the only tip I'm giving. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> don't worry, I need no, it. yeah, you can take a load of apex curb, but on the exit you have the red and white traditional that you see at racetracks around the world. Yep. Then you have a green bit of tarmac the other side of that. Um, it, we used to be allowed to have. Uh, two wheels on the green, as long as there's two wheels on the track within the white lines. They wouldn't mind. Uh, Now it is um, two wheels just off the side of that red and white, which gets tricky because you go to some tracks where it's not red and white and it's a different colour and it's all, yeah, it's just so messy. So messy. It it, it works for MSV tracks. We're at an MSV track now, the company Mm -hmm. that owns Alton Alton Brands, Mm. uh, Donington. Uh, it works for their tracks, but when you go somewhere a bit different, Knock Hill and the Mike Croft, have, Croft they have yeah. different colours, they have grass, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you soon know when you're off the track there. But yeah, I'm all for it. Let's just make it a bit more consistent and not get too silly. I think the best thing that can happen is they probably make this look a bit silly, this rule, and yeah. some people get 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 the wrong side of the stick and then they, the, the governing body realise how stupid it is and mm. they change it within the winter time. I was going to say, because actually I don't think the touring car... Um, like Alan and Ian are actually for it. I think it's yeah. a, a a thing that's come in, and they're a bit against it as well. Okay. But yeah. it's yeah, it's definitely a one that we all are not very favoured of. It. Yeah. I agree. That's why it was on the list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we Can you cast the next one? We thought we, we thought you'd love that one. <laughs> uh, <coughs> where are we? Where are we? Uh, da, 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 da. See, you've messed them up now. That's I've it. Messed up. I know, yeah, totally I know. messed them up. So young young driver initiative scholarships are they important to racing yeah I, I think it's a massive step to get you to where you want to go whether it's going single seat racing or going into touring racing a touring car racing i think it's a massive step to get you into it because you might not like it you might go actually i really want to do it but go out a couple of times and, and not enjoy it i think it's a good stepping stone to start your racing and i never had the opportunity when when i was younger to mm-hmm. to get into it and now all these new scholarships are coming up. I think it's a phenomenal experience to even just experience it and find out if you actually do enjoy it. So, what is the is, is the the most well the best kind of way to start? Is it is it karting? Uh, you know, if you're young yeah. and yeah. So I started really. I don't know what age you started karting, um, but I started karting when I was 14, mm. um, and then kind of got to where I've got now by doing different various things. But yeah, karting. I mean, it's not the best in Jersey. We have an oval um, with a couple of corners in on a road track. So, uh, yeah, I, I learnt the, <laughs> learnt, definitely learned the hard way. <laughs> Making up for it now, though, aren't you? Your karting escapades. Trying to, trying to, yeah. It's, it's, it's improved a bit in Jersey since then. We've got a proper track now. So, <laughs> Next one. Yep. Next one. Uh, so, if you could choose anybody to race against from the Super Tour era... Who would it be? <laughs> um, race of games. I'll let you start this one. It's got to be Matt. Matt's still got fire in his be- belly. Matt Neal. Yeah. It's got to be a British driver. Um, 
I would agree. Yeah, it's got to be Matt Neal. Yeah, he's got, he, you know, like I say, he's working with us. He'll be here probably in a couple of hours as well. He'll, you know, yeah. he'll go through some stuff. And when he's talking about it, he's, he's got so much passion. He's a, he's a fan of the of the championship himself, mm. fan of the sport. So he's got so much passion. And, uh, yeah, I think he's uh, he's got unfinished business. Do you think he'll get back in a car? Without I'd like to be honest, I'd like to see it. Yeah. <coughs> without, without a doubt, he'll be getting back in a car. Because yeah. I know a lot of the fans, when you see him on... Uh, social media, they would love to see Matt Neal and Jason Plato yeah. back out Come in back. cars yeah, racing. Because I don't well, think Neal's done the hybrid. Well, they, uh, I don't it's know. They, 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 see how he gets on without a doubt, yeah. Jay, um, Matt would be back. Jason, um, I, I uh, not this year, but last year when he was on the grid, I'd find myself having a beer with him now and then, and he's the same. He's 21 <laughs> in his head. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's. Uh, <laughs> he's a, yeah, there's stories about that. Guy. I love him. I really love him. But he's, uh, he's a he, character. He's I've, a character. Yeah, I've read his uh, autobiography, and that was uh, he's, yeah. he's a lad. Yeah. He is a lad. But uh, yeah. it was good. It was good. Go on, you can you can answer the next one. Okay, so you've been asked this one a million times, but not on our podcast. So, what's your favourite track, and why? <laughs> in the world or in touring cars? In the world, anywhere on the moon. <laughs> um, that'd be quite cool <laughs> I've, I've got two that I really I can't get out of Spa and Abu Dhabi they're, they've been okay. I've done well in both of them and they've been one of the greatest tracks that I think I've ever raced at it's, I've, I've been Spa it's great yeah it's great especially when you go for a rouge flat and like LMP3 car it's it's crazy absolutely yeah. crazy the amount of downforce you get through there and mm. at first you look at it and the, the hills like this you're like you've got no chance um and then, yeah, Abu Dhabi is just, I think, because of the whole thing of Abu Dhabi, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it just presents itself in a way that you can't really not like it. Wow. Yeah. Um, there's a track called Bilsterberg in Germany. That's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, it's um, it's like a, a member's circuit. Oh, okay. So I don't think they race there, but it's like a man-made Nürburgring, which is absolutely incredible. So, uh, yeah, there's real steep highs and massive drops um also yeah yas marina abu dhabi that, mm. that place is incredible it's uh, <coughs> you start testing at eight o'clock at night yeah it's, uh, crazy. Yeah. it's, nice. it's, it's amazing it's amazing what do you do the car in not in uh, abu dhabi i've done it in gt4 wow uh at, at bilsterberg yeah. uh for radical we were over there for a week and uh, oh. some lucky guy bought five different radicals and needed a couple of coaches over there to help him and, and you were like and yep, funny story is we we got there <laughs> And uh, Radical, this guy's buying five different cars. So naturally, a, a, a manufacturer would think, oh, is it for a race team? We'll bring staff out there. We got out there and, yeah, you know, for five cars, we probably had about 10 mechanics, I don't know. <coughs> he took three coaches, all the bosses went, got over there. There's one guy, and he <laughs> done an hour and he, he done an hour in uh, one of the cars. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, take, I'll take them all. <laughs> we were booked to be there for like four days <laughs> and we had the best four days ever we just used it for testing and yeah. you know right. I got a lot of track time yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so next one uh, favourite what, what are your favourite racing conditions wet or dry I, I well touring car is Obviously, Gal, when he pumps all the clouds into the air to make it rain <laughs> every weekend, um, he knows how to make a, uh, a dodgy old touring car weekend. And it's l looking like that's how Sunday's going to be here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's We've going to be weather, 26 yeah. degrees, but absolutely peeving yeah. down. So, uh, yeah, I, I love those touring car races where I don't mind when it's wet, wet, or if it's dry, dry like it is today. But I love those ones when it's like it's slicks, greasy. is it not? Yeah. And and in, and then you have a guy that's on slicks, but it's got good tire temp, so he can attack the guys on a wet. And yeah, it's, those sort of conditions are cool. I would agree. I was going to say them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we had it last year at Brands where some of us were on slicks, some of us were on wets. And you could see, I think it was Butcher, that he dropped back at the start, but then came through and finished seventh or something. Mm -hmm. It's them conditions mm. that it, it, it's cool. It really spices it up, doesn't it? Mm. It gives everybody else a chance, I think, yeah. as well. It does. It yeah, massively. It yeah. Would, actually, we had it at Donington. We yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nick. Donington, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Spiced that Ivan went out went out on slicks, That's and then it. Nick decided to box right first. Decision. Right, right decision. Right decision. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. Fantastic. So, yeah, it does yeah. massively spice the grid up. So something that really, really an annoys me in BTCC. So when we, <laughs> <laughs> uh, how long have we got? <laughs> am, amongst lots of other things. But when we're watching it, you know, you've got this irritating driver behind you, flashing lights. Yeah. And it, and it winds me up. I'm not even in the driver's <laughs> seat and it winds me up. 
But how's he, how's he make you feel? Yeah, I'm, yeah, Same. I'm all for it. Love it. <laughs> Bring it on. It's like a little it disco. Do, yeah. yeah. It does. It, so it puts the driver off, but... Yeah. Or, as long as I'm not getting it done, I don't mind. Yeah. It's from a TV point of view, because I see a lot of these comments online. Uh, why, why is he flashing his lights or the rest of it? And it's not with it's not done in the same way as it do, is on the road. Mm. Right, okay. Because so, they just think they want you to move out the yeah. way. Yeah, just like get, get out, out the way. way. No, don't no, don't look at it like that. Oh, so okay. when you're in car, you're you're all for it. If if, if especially if it's last lap and you can actually see. A, driver cracking a little bit it's really hot in their car it's as hot as you are in your car but they're under pressure and when you're nice and hot you're making the odd decision that's wrong especially how hot it gets in these things oh, it's yeah. ridiculous so um just yeah. that little little yeah. bit like looking in the mirror just puts you off for that yeah. split second you'll, you'll, you'll notice mistake. the guys in endurance racing will do it um to if people are in a battle in a lower class that the faster boys are coming through in this it's just to put you off just it's so easy to make a mistake from watching on the telly it looks like uh <coughs> that <laughs> what's the word it it looks like you, we have got complete control which we have <laughs> yeah. but these I'd things so. <laughs> uh, what's the word i'm trying to for you're so close that there's such a fine margin between being on a decent lap to not being in the window yeah. mm. especially after about lap four lap five lap six when the tires are, on, are dropping off mm-hmm. um you make one mistake and it's a snap of overseas mm. so if you can introduce someone to do that you you're it's just tactics really isn't yeah. It? Mm. yeah yeah just oh, trying okay. to put them off yeah. mm. as a driver i, um, I love it I love keep, yeah. keep them flashing yeah. <laughs> every lap yeah. <laughs> and the cars yeah. the lights. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so obviously when the cars are, you know, you've done quali, uh, you go out for your first race and you come back in for the second race. What settings can you tweak on these cars? So we, we can adjust anything we want to pretty much. I think everything apart from third gear down in the gearbox, you can pretty much change. Obviously, the engine we can't touch, mm. um, but we can do cam bar. So you can, you can adjust like the ratio of gears then? Yeah, so we can do fourth, fifth and sixth if we're allowed to change, but from third down, it's a championship rule. You cannot change it. Right. I don't know if it's locked or... Yeah, we, ju- we just can't touch it, but pretty much everything else we can experiment. Say if Bobby found that I was running an 800 spring, say for instance, and he was struggling with understeer, we might be able to put that on or change cambers or whatever. It's literally, we can mm. do whatever we want between races. It's not like part ferme, you can't touch the car. Yeah. Um, where I think some championships you can't. Um, or F1 you can't now, can you, between well, sprint every- races? Yeah, well, in, in t- for us, we can change absolutely mm. everything. Because cause the track time, although it looks a lot, you know, we <laughs> don't get any. <coughs> we don't. Yeah. Get, we get yeah. two sessions tomorrow mm. morning. You miss one of those sessions, you're being just half an hour behind everyone in terms of track running. You are really far behind. Mm. I, mean, I said mm. to you guys at SNET, I think we missed FP1. Mm. You know, you're going, yeah. your FP1 is, everyone's FP2. They're going yeah. for quality runs. I'm still uh, learning and not so much myself, but the, the, the guys are still learning setup wise going into quality. Uh, and that's the same for M Sport that, that do yeah. our motors. You know, they're, they're, they're trying to get as close to the boost figures and all the figures we're allowed to get as close to. And mm. without track time, we can't. <coughs> but all these, all these settings that you can potentially alter, tweak, you've just got to be really careful what you actually yeah. mess with. Well, so now, more than ever, the last two years, I, I'd say touring cars equally if mo- not more about engineer yeah uh, an engineer can carry a driver yeah. and yeah. i think you see that up and down mm. the grid. Yeah. an engineer can really carry a driver and uh and also um you can have a, you can have a bad weekend if yeah. even if the spring's out say yeah. for instance it's yeah. it really massively affects your weekend mm. yeah. well before I pass this over to you, I've got oh, one okay. more question. I'd like because this is my question. This okay. one. I think it's pretty good. <laughs> Best one, yeah. <laughs> it is. So, <clears throat> while you're racing, when you're racing, right? Because I know when you're steering wheel, you've got lots of buttons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you ever pressed the wrong button? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have. Is that a yes? Then? Yeah, <laughs> many times. Yeah, Donington actually <laughs> this year. <laughs> this year on the start procedure. So the start procedure is quite lengthy. I don't know. Do you use the P two P button? Yeah. So when we start, we've got a brake to a button to hold our brake, so we can at least get off it and then have the clutch and the throttle. Um, and then we have this button called P to P, so it basically cuts off the turbo to help us get off the line. I didn't press that button; I put the pit limiter on. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I got a really good launch, and then it just went straight into pit <laughs> into the limiters and going down the straight, going blah, 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 which was the most embarrassing thing I've, I think I've ever done, ever done on a start. But yeah, it's um. Yeah, I mean, there's that many buttons. I'd just get super confused. I'd, I'd just be pressing them. 
It's like a yeah. PlayStation remote slot. Like, yeah. I think once you get used to it and understand, I think the first time we got it last year, I think it was a bit trying to figure out where everything was and everyone was complaining that we had to hi- hold the hybrid. That was a bit of an issue. I think we've come in this year with a fresh understanding, okay, this is where everything is. This yeah. is what all the buttons do, um, apart from the start. But <laughs> we'll let that one slip. Yeah. I've, I've had it before. Well, don't worry, uh, we won't say nothing about that. No. <laughs> I had it before at the start this year. We had a... A start procedure. So when uh, we get to the grid, uh, we change to a different uh, screen on our dash, uh, a different map for for the uh, as we set off, and all the teams <coughs> would be doing their different variant of this. Um, so different screen, different map. Uh, I get there, you build brake pressure up on our brake button, so it's like a handbrake but on a finger button. Yeah. And then you have this P two P that reduces turbo, like a launch control if you want to call it that. Um, you go flat out on the throttle, so I'm all feeling good here. My, we get one practice start in, in FP2. Uh, I come off what I thought was the uh, where's the brake button, but I just come off the boost reduction button, and the car just died because <laughs> I went. And I'm, it's like pulling away with your handbrake up. And uh, yeah, I I knew exactly what it was. They they they, they swapped the buttons round because it was easier for gear shifts and and other bits and bobs. And it's my fault. I just. Yeah, just in the moment, forgot and sat on the grid like a plum. And, uh, so embarrassing, isn't lucky, it? Lucky enough, I got it started and, and got going and uh, yeah. didn't lose too much. Ish. I mean, I went to the back of the grid, but yeah. yeah. There's a lot to think about, though, isn't there? A lot yeah, I didn't realise. I mean, I know there's a lot of buttons on there, but I didn't realise you have to, like, hold it for, for brake. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah like, like a handbrake. It is. It's, yeah. It pretty much is a handbrake. Because you can't roll, brake. obviously, no. if you move and you roll. Yeah. You, you so don't, the, aren't you? There is an argument, I mean... Um, there is an argument if, if it's even faster. So you, you always hold the brake. Um, some drivers on the grid will just do it on their own, so they'll clutch and pull away like you do on the road, mm. um, and they are able to do it quicker than launch control. Um, the only thing with that is out of 10 times, uh, <coughs> you're running a risk of how many, you yeah, know, yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're with the the launch 9 out of 10 times, it's going to be absolutely bang on. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Very. Well, I'll ask questions. Are you sure you want to go? <laughs> There's too many buttons. Yeah, I do, yeah. I'm up for it. Okay, this was my question because it's puzzled me every time we come and watch you guys. <laughs> Do the cars have reverse gears? Yes. yes. Why don't you use them then? As in, know. when you <coughs> go into the, especially at Thruxton, you're coming out the garage, the tents, and you go into the track, mm. you're being pushed and pulled, and why so it's can't for them it's a lot easier to pull it. Right. So it's, they don't like us using reverse gear. It's everything spinning the wrong way to then get it into oh. reverse so right, okay. they prefer <coughs> especially like frox and us coming out the garages it's quicker for them to just pull it but we did it at the shakedown we did it snap we had to turn at the end and use reverse gear um but they don't really like us doing no, it because most of the time you see you get pulled backwards don't you so. i don't think i've yeah, i've never used reverse gear and i don't think i've ever seen one no. yeah, never yeah because you always i mean you know you're watching the race and, and say if somebody comes off and Hits the barrier, not you know, slightly hits the barrier, or just comes off, and you think, put it in reverse. Yeah, just put it in reverse. Yeah, reverse. Probably around, to be honest, go. I wouldn't be surprised if it does just as much damage chucking it in reverse. <laughs> yeah, I suppose because it's obviously these gearboxes, the race gearboxes. Yeah. aren't they? they're yeah. not designed to go not into designed reverse. Go, but no. I guess if you're in a sticky situation, you mm. could put it in reverse. Yeah, whole front before I fit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise you had a reverse gear to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know where the lever is, but hopefully I never get <laughs> never to use it. <laughs> Okay, we haven't got many questions left now. That's all right. I'm really liking it. Um, so we've we've heard different people talking about different engines. I think we've had a conversation with you, Bobby, about the different engine manufacturers and what have you. What are why why are they so different? Because I know you guys have got <coughs> the M Sport engine. Yeah. And other people have got Neil Brown engines. Yeah. Why are they so? Yeah. So a man tune, yeah. I mean, there's some stuff we can say and some stuff we can't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but in t- for as a whole, for, for uh, across all the Four, four, I think there is different engine manufacturers. Um, they all are very, very on it, and they know what they're doing. You know, every engine manufacturer turns up with a group of thirty guys to run uh, a couple of engines. You know, there are how you see Team Hard here. They're their own teams themselves in their own trucks, and you know they're flat out on it all weekend. Now, the difference of the engines across the uh, the pits is one. There's something down to the teams. That's uh, charge temps and like intake temps you want everything as cool as possible in that engine bay uh, another thing that is what the team uh, the the engine manufacturers work their hardest to get close to is every uh, team down up and down the pit lane gets their own boost figure 
Um, that's so all the cars are it's called balance of performance get all balanced exactly the same so we can race nice and close which obviously Gal does a uh, amazing uh, uh, well too good of a job I wish it was a little bit more open <laughs> Jesus. Uh, might give us a bit of a chance yeah. Um, so uh, yeah and now that's what makes a very good engine builder and 99% uh, of the time it's the guys that have been here doing it 20, 30 years um, <clears throat> you know because I, I was going to say M Sport are not a bad engine no, no. They, they know what they're doing look at what they're doing in WRC yeah. they're yeah. not a bad yeah. engine the problem yeah. is, is I think they've been in for two years where like the Neil Browns the Mount Tunes you've got Swindon have been in the paddock for years yeah. and know how to get a good engine mm. um, I, I think it's just time yeah mm. experience yeah, yeah I yeah, agree yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, th I think this was a your question. Oh. I'll ask it. Must be good. Must be a good one though. It's about the tires, the different <coughs> type of tire tires that you use during a race day, and basically how long does a tire last? Now we spoke with somebody at Thruxton. Um, it was Dan, I believe, Dan Lloyd, and he was on about the hard tire at Thruxton. He reckons that that is really only going to last about five laps until he starts. Degrading off. and well, yeah, losing I don't even performance. Think it, I, yeah, I don't even think it did that. Well, well yeah. The, yeah, Fruxton, um, to get the best out of the tyre, you get a slow out lap, one push lap, and then the third, well, the second lap um, feels better, but it's, it's nowhere near as good. But but the, I don't think that's a tyre degrading. I think that's a heat issue. Ah, okay. The hard gets too hot. Yeah. Here, we're running this weekend, we're running the soft and the hard. They used to run the soft and the medium here, but you didn't see too much of a difference. The guys on mediums could fight the guys on a, on a soft. If they kept them around them for about five laps, the soft was having that drop-off, so then the mediums could come and attack again. Um, where now, this weekend, you're going to see two races. You're going to see guys on a soft and guys on a hard. Right. Um, yeah, I think here, again, that the hard doesn't really degrade. I think it just, it just gets too hot. Mm. The soft does degrade. Yeah. It's quite quite interesting because it's all about tactics, isn't it? You know, Massive. Obviously, you don't know what the, the, the car in front of you is going to choose until you get on the grid, and you know it's uh, it's quite interesting. I think you'll see it more here, like that uh, Bobby was saying. I think you'll notice it massively, especially with the hard. The hard's going to help at the later stage, where the yeah. softs are going to massively help on the on the front. We've got yeah. a lot of stop starting here. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. where the softs is going to it's going to kill them. I love it. So do you get to use that set of tyres again once you've done that race, or is that it? Are they are uh, they done then? Yeah. So uh, this one's a bit of a weird weekend because we've got we've got softs and a hard. So normally, let's say this was a medium, we was running mediums all weekend, and last weekend we was running mediums. The teams would pick over their best set from the weekend from quali through to race three, uh, and yeah, that's what a carryover is. You bring them over to this weekend, and those are your FP1 tyres. So you usually run on your FP1, your, they're not very good tyres. Mm. That's the same for the whole grid. Unless someone had a problem at the last round, then you have a good yeah. set for mm. FP1. Uh, then you'd go your better set of FP uh, carryovers <coughs> for FP2 and then new tyre quality run. Quality, yeah. but you, okay. ca you can use them again, but yeah. just not in a race where you can. Like, you can use them for testing yeah. and stuff like that. Oh, right, okay. If you're swapping yeah. the tyres, aren't you, through, through quality or whatever, you, put, you go yeah. out, you come back in. And then you swap over. You so you like side the tires. Scrubbing them. As you yeah, so you always go out with the tires not in the correct position, the opposite side to get yeah. generate the heat for the rears. Because going out on a set of cold rears is not yeah. a very nice yeah. feeling. We, yeah. So you can um, you can go out and not cross, but the way the touring car is, and it takes so much life out of a tire. That they, you could run these tires on a track day car. And they'll last five day. days. Mm -hmm. yeah. They do five days on them. Yeah, be absolutely yeah, fine. Yeah. But the touring car takes so much life. The dampers and uh, the whole suspension, the whole car takes so much life out of the tyre that that's why our drop off is fairly fairly uh, fast. And that's why with these engineers, their job to try and make it last four laps, five laps, six laps Not just one. during the race. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, um, it, it's a, it, the old tyre thing. This weekend is going to be absolutely huge. Like we said, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, really, I'm looking forward to it. Interesting. Interesting. It is. Um, I'll let you read the last one in a minute, but we have skipped one. We have. For Jack. So um, this year, Jack C, is, is that in your goal? Oh, that's gone. Goal? Oh, yeah. It was, it was the aim. Um, and then we've had a really bad start to the season. Um, just issues we've had where not actually the team issues. We've just had other issues that have caused problems, whether it's been contact with another driver or, or something. But the, the Jack Sears was the aim. Um, but I think we're like 100 points already off. We're only well, we're now halfway right. through. It, it, it was an aim coming in. Mm -hmm. And like the reason why I moved here is Bobby won it last year. That was the aim to come here and 
try and repeat what Bobby did because the car is phenomenal. The, the chassis, the everything last year proved that the car is good and that's why Dan's moved as well. We, we proved that, well, Bobby proved last year that the car is worthy yeah. to be up where it is and, yeah. and fight for podiums and that's where we should have been. Obviously, it's not been on my side, but... Hopefully, there's always the it's always next year. This season, and there's exactly. always next year. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. I still want to come out yeah. with it with the season having a trophy yeah. in my hand. Yeah. I think that's yeah. still the aim. Yeah. Um, it's just there's some good competition this year yeah. in the in the Jack series, and everyone stepped up their game. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to sneak another question in. Sorry. Bonus question. You're going to get a win this year, Bobby. Yeah, well, that's, I was thinking that. I mean, <laughs> it's about yeah, time, isn't I it? I think we've been dealt the wrong <laughs> cards. We've been thinking about yeah. this as well, Bob. <laughs> Jesus, Bob. I, I, I think we've really been dealt the wrong. <clears throat> Hand of cards to start the year. The, um, round one, um, we still had last year's settings on the car as uh, Barry, my engineer, joined very late. Mm -hmm. So it just went the same as last year. So round one was for me exactly the same as last year. You know, that yeah. eighth, ninth, tenth to twelfth <coughs> battle, round about there. Uh, round two, in the mix, weren't we, mm -hmm. all weekend? Yeah. That's how every round should be. Snetterton, um, <laughs> I didn't say it on the weekend at ITV because it makes you sound really silly. <laughs> and I don't want to, you know, bad mouth uh, anything about it. But running a camera in the car, not many people know this, kills you. Really? really? The, yeah. Some of the uh, manufacturer exactly. teams, cars would be very, very light. And they run about 20 kg light. So when they put the camera in, they're able to position weight around the car so it doesn't affect you. Our cars are, well, my car's about 6 kg light. So once I put the, bear in mind, the camera's 9 kg, something like that, mm. maybe really? 10. Wow. So and it's mounted up at chest height in the car, oh. which is massive. So that was Snet for us. And um, I, I could, have not, could not believe the difference between Snet and then, was it Fruxton mm -hmm. after? Yeah. It was almost like, turn up to Fruxton, straight in again, straight mm -hmm. up in that top five, weren't we? Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I had a little issue myself that, that ruined us in quali. And then race one, we moved up through the grid. Race two, what was we sixth, seventh, back in the mix again? Mm -hmm. Then she went bang again. So I think we've been dealt the wrong, you know, wrong hand. I think coming in, hopefully we, you know, this is our luck changes this weekend. We've, we've got to call it for fighting the top yeah, five. And definitely. we're the underdog and we can give it yeah. to the manufacturers. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still excited. It's, you know. <laughs> Not as excited as I was. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I, I just want to ask this one question, I think, before we wrap it up. Yeah. Something I, I, I want to know, and I, I know a couple of the lads at Autobright want to know this as well. So you've got BTCC cars and you've got TCR cars. <laughs> yeah. over there from Jack. The Jack's, Jack's, yeah, Jack's completely different. Jack's looking at the death there. Well, I, I, I don't know what the difference is. What is the difference between these two? So I've only seen a TCR car. I've not driven it, but I know the main thing massively is they've got flappy paddles. We've got a sequential. Are they m more of a leaner uh, BTCC car? I think it's a, it's a road car. Yeah. It's a road car shell. I don't well, know. So our car, if you, if, you, if you look at our car, uh, for the people just listening, so I'll try and explain <laughs> this the best way. So so where your feet are in a, in a, in a road car, that's chopped off touring car the only bit that is a road car is the roof lining and the the roof skin. Um, yeah, yeah the roof the, skin yeah, yeah. um from where my feet are that's cut off and a cage is put in the front and those cages are the same whether you're in a bmw cooper or a astra yeah. Yeah. um the behind us um where the boot is that comes off the road road car as well but then the subframe is bolted underneath that uh, again the same across all the cars nice. we're in a tcr car it is a road car um, with a cage in it, um, they look the same. They look similar. They smell similar. They don't drive the no, same. No, They're no nowhere near, nowhere near as nowhere near as hard on the tire. Nowhere near as hard on the driver. Uh, they can do similar lap times. Uh, I've done. I was coaching a guy in one for for a couple of years. They uh, they're actually a lot faster. I think up into like fifth gear. They feel was really amazed how quick it is. But then top speed is really flat compared to yeah. what the touring car is. Um, so what engines are they then? There's, they're still two litre turbos, yeah, and, and each and each manufacturer still makes their own engine. Yeah. Um, the, the, the hard thing is with it is here we've got regulations, and even if you build a brand new car now, all right, you can try and engineering things change, and engineers get better, and stuff gets uh, you know a little better as years go on. But in all the rules are the same whether you made a car now or five years ago. They should mm. be the similar yeah. pace. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're in TCR, uh, a car, for example, I think it's the VW. It was one of the first cars to come out. 
uh, the rules have stayed the same, but then road car uh, manufacturers have made their cars, they know they're going to turn it into a TCR car and made the road car more adaptable for the yeah. TCR car. Yeah. So, yeah. so you could have bought this TCR car five years ago yeah. mm-hmm. uh, to go racing as a team and then more stuff comes out and you know in the in the car manufacturing world and there's a Audi that's next year that's two seconds up the road. So they do have balance of performance like we do, but it's... Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, I don't know that. yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. Yeah. So it's no threat that to BTCC. Everybody uh, reckons never, it's the never. new BTCC. No, 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 no. look at no. it like this. Look at it like DTM and BTCC. DTM didn't care about touring cars. Uh, German touring cars. <laughs> uh, German touring. Cars. <laughs> okay. uh, German touring. So yeah, don't. I, I, it's not even. It's its own thing. Uh, you can see jumpers dro- <laughs> drivers, drivers jump across. Mm-hmm. Well, broadly, has not it? Uh, yeah. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and smiley, smiley, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And maybe drivers the other way, but look at it like uh, it's hard to explain. Look at it like its own thing. I mean, touring car is its own thing. It, the only coincidence is they look fairly similar. Because mm. mm. um, in Europe, TCR is massive. Yeah, it's a it's a very big series in mm. in Europe. Mm. Yeah. I've always looked at the cars. I thought, thinking hmm, that looks very familiar. That does it looks looks the same as you know as our cars. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't know. I didn't actually know what was what the differences were. So interesting. I think three of us have learned something there. I yeah. think so. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Fountain of knowledge, <laughs> Mr. Thompson over there. Uh, I the, think that's it. I think that's it. Yeah. 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 So yeah. thanks Thank for joining. Thank you very much. Thanks I'd like to uh, quickly apologise to everyone for the old uh, alarm. Oh. I mean, just maybe reinstates we are in a yeah uh, in a, in in a race driver paddock. <laughs> yes, so, we are. Yeah. There's we all are. sorts of noise and, and testing going on from yeah. support series. Yeah, so. there is. Yeah. Uh, so. Thanks for joining us, guys. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having us. Uh, um, yeah, oh, I know you're busy, guys. And that's been good. It's been it's something been different it's to do on a Friday, good. to be yeah. honest. Yeah. It's, it's nice to we always have enjoy. a chat. Yeah, we always yeah, enjoy a good, podcast. Yeah. You know, we, I mean, we could waffle on forever. We could. But, do you know, uh, you know. It, there's, um, I mean, people giving it a go, but there's no one doing this for, for no. touring cars. It's, no. it's a mega idea, no. and we're we, all we're on a Friday. We're going to trade market right now. We were here first. That's our thing. No, I think I think it's a good idea. No one Quick, is take a mic it. with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, say, yeah. It's good. It is nice to do something on a Friday, like Bobby said. We're always here on a Friday, yeah, yeah. yeah. and just standing around looking at the team and seeing what we can do. But it's nice to actually do something on yeah. a Friday. Yeah, it's good, and have a chat. Yeah. Educated us all on yes. everything. Yes, yes. yeah, yes. fabulous. So thanks, guys, and uh, good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck for it. tomorrow we'll be and, on and Sunday massively. for the racing. We hope you do well. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay, then. Uh, so that's it for this podcast, everyone. So thanks very much uh, for listening. And uh, we'll catch you again on the ne- next Autobrat podcast. Bye-bye for now. Cheerio.